good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we need to be taking a little bit of a look at a new Tapu Coco card. I know, right? It's a new Tapu Coco card. And we've seen a few Tapu Coco already. We saw the promo, which was really, really good. And lately, everyone, at least everyone playing Lightning decks, is playing the Tapu Koko Prism Star that's really, really good. But this new Tapu Koko, what's that all about? Well, if we look at the stats, it's all right, though not wonderfully inspiring. So 120 HP is higher than the previous one. It's not as high as the Prism Star. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff out there that hit 120. I mean... Literally yesterday or the day before, we looked at Evil Tal from the new set. And that hits 120. There's so many Pokemon hitting 120, that kind of sucks. Similarly, you've got a retreat cost of 1, which is nice. But then again, because you can use stuff like a skateboard. But we've had a free retreater in the past. So we'd kind of like it if this was a free retreater. So that's kind of annoying. Weakness to fighting, also kind of sucky. You got stuff like the non-GX Boswell, but Picaroms everywhere. People are trying to counter it, and unfortunately, when they're trying to counter that with fighting Pokemon, they'll be countering you as well. But you do have resistance to metal, which is quite good. As it stands at the moment, not a great type. You're not surviving that many crucial hits, but it's always nice to have resistance. But honestly, the best thing about this is that you're a lightning Pokemon. So you get Thunder Mountain to reduce your attack cost. You get Tapu Koko Prism Star to accelerate energy. One energy to each of two bench Pokemon when you lost zone it. Being a lightning Pokemon at the moment is awesome. So there's always that. But what does it actually do? Well, the first attack looks uninspiring, but actually really good. I should mention our translations here are from the lovely Joe from Cerebi.net, a wonderful website you should be checking very regularly. And it does, for one lightning energy, 30 damage. Okay, fine, I suppose. But here's the thing. When I looked at Evil Tal a couple of days ago, I told you that if there's a stadium in play, it does 40. And one of the things I said was, if there was a way to add a little bit of damage, it would be amazing. Well, this does 30, but we've got Electro Power. And if you play an Electro Power, that 30 turns into 60. And 60 on a basic for a single energy on essentially turn one is redonk, ladies and gentlemen absolutely redonk because you see there's a whole bunch of 60 hp pokemon out there there's pokemon like inke for instance and remember when your opponent's got a choice between 60 and 70 hp pokemon they're going to be tempted to use professor al's lecture especially post rotation when we've lost stuff like nest ball so pokemon search is at a premium so there's going to be a bunch of 60 hp pokemon out there and yet i know it takes one of your electro power although really We've got Electro Charger, so if you're really worried about wasting them, play Electro Charger. Your opponent goes first, they pass over to you, and then you just play a single Electro Charger and take a prize. And if that's all you do, that's fine. Because firstly, you take the first prize, so you jump ahead in the prize race and your opponent is catching up. Secondly, you're KOing an evolving Pokemon that they want to keep on the field and evolve into something more useful... You're losing a basic that had one energy on that was never going to evolve. It is a good trade for you. I love this first attack purely because you're a lightning Pokemon and you can use Electro Power. And then you can be one hit KOing 60 HP basics and you're off. I mean, if you really want to go nuts, you can play four Electro Power here and just go for it. I mean, you could, and this is a bit dumb... But you could always play for Electro Power and then play an Electro Charger and shuffle them back into your deck and then play something like, I don't know, Green's Exploration to search them out again and maybe you're getting one hit KO on something like a Dedene. Although annoyingly, four of these won't quite do it. Four does 150, not 160. I don't actually think that's ever going to happen. But my point is, if you need to do a little bit more you can do a little bit more. If you're against something like a 70 HP Jirachi, then 
you're all right here. Just play two electro power. But here's the thing. This is actually a great counter for Zapdos. I love this as a Zapdos counter because you're hitting for weakness and they're not. In order for Zapdos to get a one-hit KO on you, they've got to have become active this turn and play two Electro Power because one does 110 and isn't enough. For you to get a KO on them, basic energy, one Electro Power, and you can stay in the active. This is a sneaky good counter for Zapdos and it lets you get rid of a whole bunch of evolving basics. It's only good because you've got Electro Power, but you've got Electro Power. And I might like the second attack even more. According to the lovely Joe from Cerebi.net, for two lightning, one colorless energy, 100 damage. Well, that's a little bit weak and overpowered. Tapu Koko Prism Star does 120. Boo! Oh, wait a second. If your opponent's active Pokemon is an Ultra Beast, you do 200 damage, and you discard 2 energy. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, I like very much indeed. The first one that springs to mind here, Blacephalon. Blacephalon goes down to this, ladies and gentlemen. And here's the thing, right? For Blacephalon to get a one-hit KO on you, there needs to be 2 energy on Blacephalon, and you need to Lost Zone 3 energy from somewhere on your field. In order for you to KO Blacephalon, 3 energy on a non-GX. But of course, let's not forget the Tapu Koko Prism Star Thunder Mountain Prism Star combination, whereby it turns it into essentially a single energy attack. Well, that's quite nice, isn't it? It's a great counter for stuff like Blacephalon. It really is. It's not the only one you're countering here. Let's not forget Ultra Necrozma still sees a fair bit of play in Malamar decks. Well, great news, ladies and gentlemen. Because this will get a straight one hit KO on them. And remember, with one Electro Power, you can be taken out in case. And the first attack with two Electro Power actually will take out Malamar. This is a weirdly good card against Malamar Ultra Necrozma decks. But there are others as well. We've got both the Naganadal. You see, the original Naganadal is... Well, well it does 20 damage for each Ultra Beast you got in play for one colorless energy. The problem is that we haven't had any kind of draw engine, so it's been an inherently inconsistent deck. But now the new Naganadal's got a wonderful ability, whereby you may discard once per turn an Ultra Beast from your hand and draw three cards. So they're both awesome. Problem is, they've also got 210 HP. Now, you can play Shrine of Punishment here, absolutely a possibility and that would get the KO or you can play an Electro Power. So on the one hand, no, this is not terribly convenient and on the other hand, that's eh, cool because it's really not that difficult to get up to there. Now, of course, there are some beefier ones. Feromosa and Boswell springs to mind and look, Feromosa and Boswell is sitting there rocking 260. It's only two Electro Power. Now, if they had 270, like so many of these Tag Team GXs, you'd need extra damage, but they don't, so you don't. Two Electro Power, free prizes. That's awesome. I do have slight reservations about the energy cost here. I do think free energy is, is a lot. But as I've said, you've got the Tapu Koko Prism Star Thunder Mountain combination, but you've also got Pika on. When Picarom attacks, you take three lightning energy from your deck and attach them to one of your Pokemon. So there's nothing to stop you using this to attach to a Tapu Koko, and then you're rolling. I'd like a slightly cheaper attack, I'd like slightly more HP, but come on, when would you not? But the reality is, the first attack here is really good at picking off little weak Pokemon. And the main attack here is amazing against Ultra Beast. And even if you're not against an Ultra Beast here, there's probably going to be something you can take down with a first attack. And look, if there's no little weak Pokemon and there's no Ultra Beast, there's one or two cards in your deck. I'm giving it four Wossies, and that might be a little bit over the top. It might be a little bit generous. It might be a little bit nice on my behalf, and I don't even care. I really like this as a low-energy, efficient attacker. It's good. But I want to know what you think about it. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv 
slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where we talk about games that don't even have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.